Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft and thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is project number five, yep, yeah, number five of the Creative Card Series 2018. Um, this is also a hobby base kit tutorial. So I usually do them on a Wednesday, but because I'm doing this series and I'm uploading every other day, it's fallen that Tuesday is the day for the upload, so it's coming to you a day earlier. Um, I absolutely adore this card. I think it's wicked. Um, it's not my idea. I found this, I forgot the lady's channel. It's a five year old tutorial. Um, I don't think she's going anymore, but I'll share her. When I find it again, I'll share it below in the um, description box. Um, and it, she called it a twist and fold card and it is so easy. Um, so I've samified it, I've put my touch on it and I've done this um, for a friend and um, you can see there if I just see the lovely little flowers there, these were in the kit, the papers were in the kit. Um, this is a wood veneer which I've heat embossed which was my own stash but I'll show you how to do that and then basically you open it up and inside it has this little tuck here. Now I've just made this tag but this is perfect and the lady whose tutorial I saw she put a gift card in here and I thought that was a really good idea but if you, you weren't putting a gift card in here and she had a sentiment stamped here I've just made this tag to put another little message on. You could put a few tags in there you could even put a little envelope with a little kind of flat gift in there as well a piece of jewellery that would work as well so it's got lots and lots of um, you know uses and I'm going to talk you through the envelope at the end as well so that is the one I've done here and it's got these greys and kind of light greens you know all the kind of grey kind of tones but I really like the way it's come together so the one I'm going to be using today or making today even is green with green's the base color and then this paper here which we also received in the kit and now I've already gone ahead and done all the the bits that you don't need to see me doing um, but I'm going to talk you through the basics um, I am not going to I'm going to do this one as a friends card as well again um, but I'm going to leave all the inside plain and I'm not going to do the tag because again that was from my own stash so it's you know it, a tag's easy to do you can a lot of people have di um, tag punches as well so we'll leave that bit out but what you need is for your main card base is a piece of 6 by 12 okay so that's really easy then to mat this piece here on the front and this piece here on the middle on the inside sorry is um, a piece of five by six and one eighth. So you need two pieces of five by six and one eighth, okay? Then you need one piece of three by six, and that is for your first mat here. So you can see I've got that light color just there. Then to layer on top of that, I've got a piece of two and three quarters by five and three quarters. Okay, so that is all the paper that is needed. So scoring, you don't need the scoreboard. I'm just going to get rid of that, but get your stylus and a ruler. And just put that one down there. So what you want to do, okay, so with your green piece here, I've already just done mine just to make sure I get it right for the video. So your ruler, we're going to score on the diagonal from the bottom left here to the top right. Now the ruler won't stretch. So if you grab another ruler and just butt it up to the end there and just get it so it's all lined up so that your line from your rulers runs perfectly from corner to corner okay start scoring to all the way to the end of your 12 inch your normal ruler there and then you can get rid of that now because now you've got that score line you can just oh, follow that score line to the end of that corner there okay so it's just so you get that continual line which you can see there then what you want to do is with your ruler is along the top you want to put a pencil mark at four and a half inches, okay? And then down on your bottom um, right hand side, you want to again come in at four and a half inches. Then join those two lines up, okay? Now, I wasn't sure which way I wanted mine to fold, so I've got a slight fold there, but you won't see that. So you should now have this long score line here. And then this from four and a half inches in, pencil mark, four and a half inches in on the bottom there, pencil mark, and then score that one. Then what you're going to do is fold over in half. So you've got a perfect crease there. Get your bone folder. 
and make sure that's all nice. And then with this one, you're just going to fold it in half. And where we folded it, it will give you that perfect fold. Now, if it buckles a little bit like mine is there, you just need to lie it down flat and get your bone folder and just really heavily burnish it to smooth it all out. Okay, and there is your card. So if you stand that up, that's how it will look. Burnish this one again, nice and crisp. And there is the card. So that is the, I guess, where she's got the name of twist and fold, because you're twisting the paper across itself and then folding it in half. So that's the card base done. Now for your, all your um, kind of mats and layers. So the bigger one of your two here, depending on what it is that you decided to use, grab your trimmer. Pop it in, so this is the piece of three by six. Pop it in on an angle, so you're gonna do, in my case I'm doing, so with the, the, the shorter, um, I've got it in portrait mode. So you wanna go from top left to bottom right, we're gonna cut, so pop it in your trimmer. Pop your points so they're in the track, like so. And then what I do when I'm cutting from a corner, is I actually start in the card. And that way you won't buckle your corners you see there I've still got two nice sharp corners so now I've got two pieces which is perfect that's what we want and then the same with your other piece pop it in line up in the tracks if you've got directional you will have to do two of these pieces so the ones where I said it was two and three quarters by five and three quarters you will need to cut two because this one is going to go on here and then open it up and it's also going to go in here and because it doesn't matter which way my paper goes I can use both of those pieces but if this was directional this piece would now be upside down because it was on the top like that you're then turning it around so bear that in mind you may need two pieces of your pattern paper so now that's all of our triangles done so they are now going to all sit on top of each other and you probably can't really pick it up so much here, but when you see it and when it's against the green, i bring it in here, it's got a nice, it does give it a border, you can kind of just pick it up there, so, and you'll see it better in the pictures. So that's that piece. Then with these pieces here, so these are our six and a quarter by uh, five. Along the uh, six and a quarter inch side, you want to, with your ruler, just come in and put a pencil mark at four inches along the top here. So you can see already I've put a little pencil mark just there at four inches. Then along the other side, you want to put a pencil mark at three inches, and I've already done that. So three inches up here, four inches here. Pop it again in your trimmer, and you're going to cut from those corners, those points, sorry, so like so. And then from that four inch one, you're going to cut down to the bottom right hand corner of that card. That will now give us a perfect layer, matte even, for inside there. It's going to go in that pocket, sorry, like so. Oh, okay. So you can see how that one goes in, you just need to move it around a bit. So that's that one there. Now what you can do is cut it again or just sit it on top of your second piece and just trace it. Or you can sit it in your trimmer, which I'm going to do here, and lay my bit on top so I can see now that's in place and I can just go straight in and cut that. And now I know that that cut point there, I just need to line that up to the bottom, like so. So now you will have those two pieces. Okay, so that's all your mats and layers done. So now you want to start sticking them all down. So like I said, these ones are going in here and in here, and then your bigger, so your plain pieces, so that one is gonna go there with more pattern on top, and then again on the inside there and then we can start decorating with all of our bits and pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all that stuck down. Now when you go, also when you go to stick this one down, if you just open it up and then you can sit it in there and it just makes it a bit easier for you to obviously work where it needs to go. Okay, I wasn't happy with this mat when I put it down. It's not, I mean I've moved it a bit on that back one because you're not going to see it. Um, so it, it's okay, but 
when I put it on here it just doesn't seem to be doesn't work right so what I've worked out is actually you want to come in so this one was at three inches coming up on the side that one's fine but then the the marker that you've done along the top there I think it's actually going to be better let me just line this up with my grid but you want to come in at, at three and three quarters so come along there at three and three quarters and come up this side at three I'll put it all on my blog um, but yeah I just it, it wasn't giving me that nice border um, and I'd done this all by hand at first and then I measured it and I think I probably just measured it slightly wrong so now if I open up the front one see that sits in there perfectly you have got a nice like quarter inch frame all the way around okay so like I said everything will be in my blog and I will also write that up on this video as well just so you know exactly what it is you've got to do Okay, so there is the card with all of the mats and the layers done and there's inside as well. So it's, it really starts to come together and you start to really see the shape. Now one thing I did do on the one here is I... Oh, I've got a bit of glue there. Oh no, it's not. Oh, I got worried then, I thought I dropped a bit of glue. Um, I've sealed this pocket on the front. So here it's open at the moment. I'm going to actually seal that shut, but that's entirely up to you because you could, imagine this is here, you could do something with the front there and you could have a little tag you know and have that with something on it if you wanted to but I've kept mine in the inside I just quite like it kind of poking out the top there so I am going to stick that down so I'm just going to open this up and just put my glue just all in that top um, triangle and what I found as well by gluing it down is it did kind of make it a bit stronger and kind of stay in place um, you know this doesn't want to like pop open or anything so again once you do it and you can you know see for yourself um, you can decide which way you prefer so just stuck that one down just going to flip it over just make sure that glue and just really burnish all those lines again get that all spread out and by doing this as the glue dries you, sh you really flatten it and straighten it as well I mean this glue is, is paper friendly so it doesn't warp anyway but this will just help just make it really really strong just flip that one over okay so you can see now I've got a real nice sharp side there to my card um, and it just I just personally I think I prefer it that way okay so I went ahead as I showed you at the beginning and I die cut all of these now, I don't know what color I was going to have on the top basically I've done six flowers because with these ones that we got in the kit remember if I showed the die at the beginning or not it's one of the dinky dies we got two and this was the flower one that we got and I really like it um, so I'm just layering them up so I don't know whether I'm going to have the darker on the back like I did on this one and then start layering them there or whether I'm going to have the, the darker colour on the front and pop them there. So I'm just going to have a little play around and see what I decide to do. Okay so I'm going to go for the green on top so I think what I'll do first is just on the one that's going on the back I'm just spodging some glue in the middle there. And then with the one going on top, you just want to overlap them slightly, just so you see little bits of the one underneath, okay? So, again, it just brings them to life a bit more, just, you know, it's better than just a flat flower. Nobody likes a flat flower. And again, just move it around until you get all of your points underneath poking through. Okay, so that's those in place. Then I'm going to start popping them down. So the back one there, I'm just kind of mirroring what I've done here. So pop some glue. It's kind of coming over the edge there. And then these ones went on some dimensional stickers. So just pop one there and one there. And this was so that I could feed these kind of leaves behind so that one is going to go I reckon there will do and then this one overlaps all three of them like so okay then I've got all of these here so again I've used what four so two dark and two light so I'll pop them away with the other bits and pieces for later and then just literally there's no kind of rule with this just pop them in I always trim a bit off because I don't want them too long a little bit of glue on the very ends there and then with my pokey tool because this one's flatter I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and just pop that under 
and then with the lighter one cut it at a different length so you just got you know they're not all the same okay so you can see now how cool that's all coming together so I need to get my sequins but also what I'm going to do first of all is show you how to heat emboss um, any kind of wood veneers or any, anything really as long as it's not plastic because you'll melt it so as long as it's um, and if it's metal you need to be careful because that will obviously get very very hot so just be careful but wood um, is okay as long as you're careful with the heat so again it could it could burn so you just want to be careful with it so I have got my okay so grab some Versamark and I've got a piece of copy paper here and just ink up just covering that like so and then my silver embossing powder here I'm just going to just drop it over the top there and just kind of with the back of my spoon here you can see I'm completely covering it just so I can press down on top just so that it does completely cover it. I'm going to do two layers. You can do three, it gives it more of a, a metal look, but I think two on that one was fine and it does almost give that effect anyway. And then just find where you popped it and shake off any excess. And then we want to heat set that. So I'm just going to pop that over there for a second. Make sure you get your heat tool nice and hot first. And then just as you would, just keep it moving. Don't keep the heat in one area because that's when you will cause it to warp or even burn and that's not what you want to do. So, And because some of the um, embossing powder has gone onto the sides, I'm gonna heat set the sides as well because you don't want any of this powder like still kind of tacky or not set it's just going to end up coming off on your card so you do need to make sure it's all sealed get right up to the end there and then just go along the sides and you can see any bits that you might have missed okay so that's that one done there and I've noticed that some of it is just inside so I'm just going to carefully just get rid of that like so there we go and then bring over your powder again just give it a little bit longer than you would usually just to set but already that's dry and then just ink it up again and just repeat but what you can do this time is just with the powder that's already on the paper there is I can just move that around making sure it's completely covered and the good thing about this is, is if you've missed a bit you can just go back into it again and let me just check there that all looks good again always tap off any um, access any excess like so and then just heat set that again okay so if I just bring that up now and you can just see just with two layers it gives it almost like a bubble effect and it looks brilliant, it's really, really cool. So it's just a fun way to transform any wood veneers that you may have, and you're just like, actually, I don't use them like that. You can paint them, um, which is what a lot of people do, but you can emboss them as well. So, or heat, heat emboss, should I say. So I'm just gonna let that just set a little bit. And while that one's just drying, I'm just gonna pop some embellishments on my flowers here. Sticking with the silver theme and we got these in a kit um, a couple of months back so everything gets used there we go okay so that one is dried pretty much I think so I'm just using my tacky glue here um, it's very lightweight and this glue dries completely clear so I'm just popping some glue on the back there and then I just popped it across on an angle. Of course you can pop any sentiment you want. You could have a stamp sentiment. But I just thought this looks quite nice across the card. Like so. So there are the two twist and fold cards. 
Like I said, I'm not going to do the tag for the inside. This was just a, a nest of tag dies that I had, but you could just cut out. If you've got rectangle um, dies, you could just cut the three um, sizes down, hole punch it, pop some ribbon, and there's your tag. Um, but I thought I'd leave this one plain because I may want to use it for a gift card or another little envelope in there or just something different. So I'm leaving that one plain for the moment. Now envelope, I'm going to just let that one sit. So I'm going to use this one here. So the envelope I'm going to make is to match the green. But you will use this. Um, sorry, not use this. I'm not thinking for the minute. Where's my, um, oh, here's my punch board. Right. So we are coming in along the longest point here at six and three quarters. So it will have to be a seven inch um, width. And then our height is five, um, between five and a quarter. It's five and three eighths. So let's say five and a half. So five and a half by seven. So we grab our punch board here, five and a half by seven is an A7 size, so it's telling us we need a piece of ten and one eighth by ten and one eighth, so I'm just going to get this trimmed, so ten and one eighth, and again, like so. And again, then we need to, so A7, 10 and 1, 8, so 4.5 is where we need to score. So line this up here, 4.5, punch and score. If you haven't used the envelope punch board before, I will share a tutorial on how to use it. Um, there are lots of uses for this and it's a very, very handy gadget to have in your kit. Okay, so you can see now, what you end up wanting is this shape which resembles the same as what's on the um, front there. So let's just pop that one away and just fold in all of our sides and then grab my double sided tape and you just want to rub rub, run even, um, just on the two in, small inside side edges here, so one, two. This um, paper is all from the Be Happy um, Dovecraft range and I already had the 12 by 12 papers so that's why I've been able to do the matching envelope here um, but you can obviously buy extras um, that match the kits as well that you receive. So, let's do that one there. There we go. And then fold up the bottom. You can round off the edges if you want. I'm going to leave these ones. And then that one, which is dry now. Got some embossing powder on the back, which I need to brush off. So one more time. There's the card. And like I said, it all stands up. Lovely and then that will fit inside perfectly like so. so there we have it so I hope you enjoy um, enjoyed this project number five um, but also another hobby base um, kit tutorial you've now got until the 21st of July to register for August kit um, so getting quick because we're already what are we now? Yeah, we're, we're halfway through the month, so um, you'll need to uh, register to receive the kit for August. Um, uh, any other questions or anything you've got about the kit, just leave them in the comments below, but also check out my blog, so I have all the links to that, and I'll have the links to the Hobby Base subscribers um, page um, as well. So there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.